Check it out, it's a broken table. Hey, what's up? New shirt and scruffy facial hair, so I apologize for that. It probably looks really gross. The scene you just saw was shot like a couple days ago, and then I procrastinated finishing it. So, I mean, speak of procrastination, right? But I mean, that fits the video, so perfect. So I moved in this apartment about five months ago, and the day I moved in, I actually broke that table, and I brought it in thinking that I was gonna fix it up, you know, it'd be a nice little project, but I haven't touched it since. But a full-size dinner table isn't really something I think I need right now. I mean, I eat dinner on my perfectly good coffee table while I watch TV, and I don't have any friends over for dinner parties or anything that we'd need a full-size dinner table for. But all in all, I've been procrastinating fixing it up because, I mean, I don't have a need for it right now. By this point, you're probably thinking that I'm gonna go out, buy the materials I need, and fix it up and make a vlog or something or some meaningful point out of all this because after all, procrastination is bad, right? Actually, it might not be as bad as you think. History lesson. Historically, procrastination has not been regarded as such a bad thing. The Greeks and Romans generally regarded procrastination very highly, with it being said that the wisest leaders embraced procrastination and would basically sit around and not do anything unless they absolutely had to. The idea that procrastination is actually a bad thing really started in the puritanical era. And in case you're wondering, that's the late 1500s, but it's not important. Now what I'm saying is some types of procrastination can be good and some types can be bad. Take for example, active and passive procrastination. So active procrastination is when you put something off to do something else more important, like me not fixing the table because I wanna make a video about not fixing the table. And passive procrastination is when I watch TV instead of fixing the table or something I don't need to be doing because I just don't want to fix the table. And that's basically the negative one right there. And although I do sort of both, there are times when I can definitely fix the table, but I just don't. Or go out and get the materials to fix the table, but I don't. So if you can tell, I'm not actually gonna go out and buy the materials to fix the table for this video because, like I said, I don't need the table. I don't have a use for it. But when I do make plans for a dinner party, which I would like eventually here, maybe around Christmas time, then I'll fix it up. I'll go get the stuff, fix it right up. And I think fixing it just to have it fixed and up and nice wouldn't give me a sense of accomplishment as much as if I had planned a dinner party and I fixed it just for that occasion. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to basically procrastinate like a pro. I'm gonna leave it the full amount of time until I actually have to do it. So say I have a dinner party around Christmas time. That's about September, October, November, December. So that's about four months away. So the longest we can wait to fix it is about like three months, 29 days, and like 22 hours, because it might take me two hours to fix, I don't know. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait that long to fix that table that's been in my living room for already five months. By then it'll be in my living room for almost nine months and then my lease will almost be up. But at least I'll have that sense of accomplishment for fixing it. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I just don't wanna do it. <laughs> this is just me making excuses for the reason I haven't fixed the table yet. <laughs> On the other hand, it feels really good to get something done around here. <laughs> 